G'day folks. Well for today's equipment autopsy we have a wrecked, damaged and pretty much worn out refrigerant recovery unit. This one was used to recover burnt out systems and big semi-hermetic compressors and things. As a result the oil inside is just horrible, it's mostly acid. So I'm going to be very careful with this one. But it does have some nice accumulators, heat exchangers, other things like that oil separator which is what that thing is um, yeah I'm gonna rip it to bits and get rid of it it's been kicking around here for a while and I can't justify cleaning the whole thing out and rebuilding it so it's just got to go compressor windings I think are a bit sad they've been eaten by acids I'll keep the fan and coil and just wash the coil out because that's a good condenser I'll keep that there which is a heat exchanger that's a suction line, that's a discharge line, so you've got a coil inside it which exchanges heat with the high temperature side. Yeah, it's a mess, it's cut severed wires and other bypasses been done to it before. They pretty much bypassed all of that. The main PCB hasn't had power in a while, they've just hot wired it straight to the main terminal block. So, I'll try and get this main cover off. This front part actually. I'm going to undo these and then undo the bottom bit and we'll get the front panel off. I don't know who the unit's made by but its service sticker is Hayden Refrigeration. Pretty big company in Australia. I see their vans and uh, uh, service units out everywhere. And poor old gauge is stuffed. <laughs> don't know what that's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to have an LED readout in it. Because all the electronics on this have been bypassed. It just runs or it doesn't. Well, probably used to run. But either way, I'll get some good fittings off it. And hopefully a few good parts. There's a nice big copper heat exchanger in there too. Okay, that was fairly easy. Nothing a pair of side cutters and a shifter can't do. I'll keep these little capillary lines intact because they're good for these pressure switches. That looks like a uh, control board of some sort. And that was a selector on the front. Oh yeah, long lost, long since lost its control knob and it was disconnected down there anyway so I don't think they've used that in a while. There we go. Who needs a selector switch anyway? Yeah I was right, that's an LED strip. Just tells you level a level level sensor on one of these accumulators. Let's go through there. Yeah, who needs old micro switches anyway? It's all trash. That can go on the trailer. I'll keep this though. Uh, probably unscrew those brass fittings for scrap. Oh, then again, uh, I might keep keep them. They're fairly heavy duty refrigerant fittings. So I'll keep some of the brass fittings which I don't already have duplicates of. Hmm, made in Philippines. Cool. That is an oil accumulator or something. I'm guessing that's an oil drain. Nothing coming out, but yeah. Still a little bit of gas pressure on the suction side, but that's because there are check valves and solenoid valves. Uh, so always check pressures on something like this because some sides will still hold pressure because of all the valves in it. But this one here is pretty much out. So it's just safe to strip down. Yeah, no pressure left. That's good. Um, I suppose I should start undoing some of these fittings. Take them off, take these capillary lines off. The uh, condenser's good, it's got flare fittings on it as well. So it all pretty much just unbolts. You don't have to worry about desoldering everything. Yeah, there's a heat exchanger. That's good. Made in York, Pennsylvania by Duchette Industries. That's pretty much trashed. I won't be keeping that one. It's a bit stuffed. It's a Australian main Tecumseh compressor. Uh, looks like they've changed it at one point. I guess they got sick of changing it because they're pumping gas out of burnt out units. But I'll keep the coil, fan, heat exchanger, 
solenoid valve. Well, I'll keep some of the bits. Just flush them out with uh, Carby cleaner before I use them. This thing's interesting. Might even cut that open and see what's inside it. Okay, that's a good start. We've got two fittings for the condenser coil. We've got one going out of the oil trap or oil separator. That's a suction line going into the compressor itself, normal suction line, low pressure side, which is also plumbed into the oil separator. Um, and on this contraption, this check valve is cut the one that comes out of the oil separator, out of there. Uh, where's that other check valve? Well, this one here is flowing that way, so yeah, there's gas coming out of here flowing that direction. Might as well put it back up there. Yeah, we've got refrigerant flowing through this crankcase pressure regulator back into the crankcase of the compressor. Um, and the suction coming in. This is the high this is the high pressure out from the condenser, so it's going through this solenoid valve, which only opens when it's required to. Uh, high pressure gauge, which is that. High pressure coil going through the heat exchanger. That's your suction line going in, so it's exchanging heat with the suction gas and coming out of the condenser. So the liquid does not get processed in any other part of this unit. It just comes straight out of the condenser through there, through the solenoid valve and out to your recovery bottle. All of this other stuff is, is low pressure suction side. So you've got oil accumulator. I'm guessing that's also an oil accumulator because it's got a sight glass and a uh, drain valve on it. Um, yeah, they're kind of interesting. I won't kill this just yet by cutting it open, but hopefully someone can tell me what it is exactly. I'm pretty sure it's just another oil accumulator. It's probably got two. May not have originally had this one. There's a lot of sloppy solder work on it, so they might have added this one later on. Maybe this was used for recovering refrigerant and oil from semi-hermetic compressors. But either way, it's an interest, interesting bit of gear. And as you can see, the oil's bright yellow with nastiness. Fan. Yeah, it's got to disconnect this one because that... That's the discharge. Okay, so discharge comes up through here and comes out there. So there must be a discharge coil or something inside this accumulator. I really can't tell without cutting it open and ruining it, but being an oil separator, I'm guessing it evaporates any liquid inside or any liquid coming back from the uh, compressor being recovered and any oil just remains trapped in there and gets discharged out maybe into there. I really don't know. Yeah, warranty void. <laughs> I'm guessing warranty doesn't cover using it for uh, recovering nasty old units because I don't think this is an original compressor. Oh well, let's keep dismantling it. Well, I made a door in the compressor and sure enough she's seized solid and the oil that's coming out of it looks worse than the oil in my BMW. And that oil's been in there for six months. That's just evil. It's really evil. Still got a tiny bit of refrigerant evaporating out of it. But that pump is just rock hard. It seems to be with these Kirby compressors, they just seize up. Considering what this one's been through though, look at all that corrosion. It's been sucking moisture, it's been sucking acid. The windings probably weren't far off, but the bearing failed first. Yeah, this thing, these things must eat compressors when you use them to recover dead units. Because you get all sorts of shit through the system. Yeah, it's just nothing but rust on the inside. It's dead now. Uh, I'm going to hang on to the bits and pieces that I got out of it, at least most of them. I'll drain the oil out of this and chuck it on the trailer. Same with this thing here. 
very evil looking. Don't even think it's worth keeping it. It's got something floating around inside it though. Hmm. Yeah, this thing is stuffed. Well and truly. Not worth fixing it up. Not at all. Ah oh, well, that's the end of that one. Thanks for watching.